Hello there, Indian Mills, United Methodist Church family, friends, and guests. You know, when you look into the eyes of someone who is in need, whom do you see? Well, Jesus calls us to see himself in all people. So today, we'll explore how, for Jesus, compassion and justice are intertwined and inseparable and that true justice is all about relationships. Let us pray for the church and for the world. When I pray, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with a heartfelt, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Amazing God, we come before you and long to know you better. Help us to see the ways you call us and to live into being the people you have created us to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Touch the leaders of the world and of the church to work for peace and to learn that true justice restores relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Imprint your message of love on our hearts to see you in the faces of all people, especially those who are suffering from illness, injury, oppression, and grief, including those we lift up to you either silently in our hearts or aloud in our homes. Comfort and heal all people so that all we do in your name will be a witness to your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh. 
there are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross that narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. So draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Today's gospel reading is from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to help you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On the mission trip to Mexico that Debbie and I took a few years ago, we met the girl who we sponsored for school supplies. In spite of living in poverty, the face of Jesus was seen in this little girl, her mom, and her grandmom's smiles. Jesus calls us to see him in others and treat them as fellow human beings, children of God, sisters and brothers in Christ. Today's reading isn't just about helping people, it's about the judgment of communities and systems. In Matthew chapter 25, the sheep ask, when did we see you in need and help you? You see in their care for the needy, the sheep and body Jesus teaching and care for Jesus without even knowing it. But the goats cry, when did we see you and not take care of you? If only they had known Jesus was the least of these, they'd have cared for him. And they'd have cared for others. But Jesus doesn't ask us to care for others so that we can be rewarded. Jesus wants us to care for others because they're fellow children of God, fellow sisters and brothers in Christ. They're human beings. What Jesus asks is pretty simple. Drink, food, clothes, and visits. For Jesus, compassion and justice are inseparable. The care of each other's physical bodies and well-being is essential, not just occasionally, not just with a few select people, but always and with everyone we encounter. The Hebrew word for justice translates as righteousness. In his book, The Spirit of Art, The Spirit and Art of Conflict Transformation, Thomas W. Porter Jr. describes how justice is about restoring right relationships. Like many communities, Shimon has systemic issues that may lead some to feel needy, unwelcomed, and isolated. It is challenging to identify people with needs, to welcome newcomers, and relate to the isolated. We have people in our community living in mansions who may be oblivious to neighbors. We have people living in trailers or modest homes who because of financial hardship, because of location and lack of transportation or they don't, are unable to get basic needs met. Most doctor's offices, urgent care centers and hospitals are over 20 minutes away by car. Some who are ailing and homebound cannot find affordable home health care. With no downtown area for easy, affordable shopping and no public transportation, how does a person who cannot drive get food and other services? Shop rights and acmes are over 10 miles away. Murphy's Market is closer, but a walker still needs a cart for their weekly grocery shopping. Many rely on social media to connect, to connect to places for orders for delivery, but that also requires greater expenses. Not everybody can afford that. And people, when they go on social media, find Facebook pages, local Facebook pages that contain disturbing posts that include gossip, bullying, threats, and intimidation, leading people to not getting the help that they need, not feeling welcome, and certainly becoming more and more isolated. In examining our role in all this, 
and what we can do about it, we need to ask ourselves, what is our attitude toward the needy? For instance, do we say, uh, don't help them, they're lazy and just want handouts? Or do we say, let's help those people so we'll be rewarded sheep status too? Or do we see Jesus in them? And seeing Jesus in them, recognize and nurture the gifts that God has given them. You see, we need to ponder what we need to change to really help the needy. One of the ways our church tries to address the needs of the poor in our community is through the Lord's cupboard, our food pantry. But we need to consider our purpose and evaluate our effectiveness. Why do we offer food and shop break cards to those in need? Is it to earn Jesus' favor and become the sheep? Or is it because we embody Christ and see Christ in others and want to care for the needy simply because they are our sisters and brothers in Christ, fellow human beings? In what ways has our ministry looked at the needy and seen the eyes of Jesus Christ? Another question to ask in evaluating our ministry to those in need is how have online postings impacted our efforts? Are we truly seeing Jesus in others or are we passing judgment on them? because we've heard gossip about them or certain news about them that we don't like? If the least of these is Jesus and we judge them, are we not judging Jesus? We need to consider how, how we as people of God Followers of Jesus Christ can change our attitudes about other people, whether they're people who fall short of the glory of God or whether they're people who are saints, how we can change our attitudes about other people and see in their face the face of Jesus, face of Jesus Christ. When we see Jesus in others and hear gossip, we won't participate in it because we are embodying Christ and we see Christ indeed in those very people. We can also, when we see Christ in others, listen to new ways God may be leading us by listening to those least of these. Some of us, you know, are very critical of Facebook and other social media. I alluded earlier to gossip, bullying, and intimidation on local Facebook pages. We hear people say, Facebook removes Christian posts. But I've got to tell you, Facebook has been a blessing for our church during this pandemic, and I imagine for other churches as well. For the past two years, I posted hundreds of services on Facebook. All those services included the Lord's Prayer. Not once have I had any service removed by Facebook. To the best of my knowledge, Facebook does not take down messages about God's love. They don't take down or at least I haven't seen them take down the Lord's Prayer. Perhaps posts that get removed are posts where the poster has not seen the face of Jesus in the faces of Facebook users. And in not seeing Jesus in the Facebook faces of Facebook users, they have posted in anger divisive topics that may offend others or they posted items that say, forward this message if you love God, 
If you don't, you follow Satan or indicating that you won't get into heaven if you don't forward this message. Friends, these posts are not good witnesses to the love of God in Jesus Christ. Not at all. Instead of complaining about Facebook, let's see Jesus in Facebook users and post positive quotes. Feed people with positive quotes from the scriptures from Jesus or theologians about God's love and how we can positively respond to that divine grace and mercy. Let's try a one-day experiment where we imagine every person we meet is Jesus. Can we do that? And think about how this can change how we perceive and treat others. Let's see Jesus in everyone, and especially in the least of these, offering them food, drink, clothes, welcome, and friendship. Let us pray. Oh, loving God, we thank you. We thank you for your justice and compassion. Help us to reflect Jesus' righteousness in our lives by seeing Jesus in everyone we encounter. Amen. Um, invitation, confession, and pardon coming in five, four, three, two, one. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Compassionate God, help us see the forces that get in the way of our having true, caring, respectful, healing relationships with other people, and to our own vulnerability to prejudice, judgment, and self-righteousness. We seek your righteousness, which we see in Jesus, the Word made flesh, who reconciles and renews, 
who rebuilds and redeems, who brings into restored relationship, brings us into restored relationship with God, and who points the way to restored relationship with our neighbor. Forgive us, quench us, make us whole, all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, your love remained steadfast. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem the world. Dying on the cross, he took upon himself our sin and death and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. When he given thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered near and far and on these gifts that in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the words which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I invite you now to take a piece of bread or a cracker. And if you are with family, friends, and loved ones, break the bread and share it together. If you're by yourself, take a piece of bread or cracker and share it together with us online. Take, eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Now I invite you to take the cup and either individually with cups or you'd like to share the cup, you're welcome to do that too at home with each other or, or if you're by yourself, take the cup and share the cup with each other as we share together the blood of Christ 
shed for you. Take and drink. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Having been nourished and nurtured by your word and by this holy meal, may we go into the world to truly give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour At thy feet is treasure store Take myself, I will be Ever only all for thee Hey there, Indian Mills, the United Methodist Church family, friends and guests. We certainly hope you have been inspired today to see Jesus in the eyes of other people and that compassion and justice are intertwined and indeed inseparable. That justice and justice is, involves relationships and that you will want to help those in need not to be rewarded, but because they are your sister's they are our sisters and brothers bonded together by the grace and love of Jesus Christ. Remember, friends, God loves you and so do we at the Indian Mills United Methodist Church.